Hello and welcome to a PC tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can optimize your PC for better gameplay in some games and if you have limited or lower RAM or if you have games that you play that have more memory leakage issues this should improve your performance and reduce crashing and game lag. The second part of this video I'm going to show you some tricks in optimizing your network interface card or NIC whether it is a wireless or a wired connection that you use I'm going to show you how to improve both of them and reduce your CPU load as well uh, while you game and you use your internet so first part is you want to go here start menu <clears throat> and depending on which version of Windows you have uh, you can also use your keyboard button to access the start menu and then in here you want to type advanced system settings you should find this you go into the advanced system settings you click on this and in here you'll find several tabs it should already be on advanced if it's not <clears throat> then just select it and then go under performance click on settings it's right here and the first part here is you can set this to adjust for best performance or you can do it like me and I put custom and then I select the one that I want okay uh, if you do adjust for best performance however you want to enable your clear type or clear type text okay make sure when you do that you enable it and then choose whichever one that looks best for you as you scroll down and choose one of the six and you know by the time you're done Finally, it will be like, okay, finish, and you're done, right? This is only if you're using the uh, adjust for best performance or custom, because then your text is just going to look weird without the clear type, okay? Then we go into advanced. Make sure that processor scheduling is set to programs. Make sure that you go into the virtual memory once this is done, and click change. Now. I have three drives on this PC, and this step is going to require some drive space. Okay, make sure that you use a, a drive that has a solid state or SSD drive is what it's called. Make sure that you have an SSD drive and that you're using this SSD drive in this process. Select whichever drive that you know it's an SSD. You can do you can do that by clicking here, or click a start menu and then go to Task Manager and then go Performance tab right here. And then here it tells you which one is the SSD, right? Right here. So for me, all three of them are SSDs, so it's okay. Which, whichever one I use, it doesn't matter, right? So <clears throat> I'm using my E drive. You might not only have like C. You may not have the other two. You might just have C. Just make sure that you have room. Uh, make sure you have at least 100 GB room or like, you know, uh, 70 gigabytes of room because we're going to use that here. Now. In here, uncheck this. It should, by default, should be checked. Take it off. And now you can control this. You can control the options here. So, for example, let's say just you only have C, right? You can click on C and then click on custom size. Do not have no paging file and do not leave it on system managed. Never leave it on system managed. This is what's, for some of you, causing an issue. All right, click on custom size. And then in here, you can type 49152 and in initial. And in the maximum, you can type 65536. Okay, once you're done, you click on set, and it should set this value here. You can see it reflect here once you click set, and then you click on OK. And then in here, you click on apply. Again, you click on OK. And here again, you might be able to click apply, you might not. Just make sure you do. Click apply, and then click OK. Once you're done, it will prompt you to restart your PC. You can click on restart now, or you can do the Restart later, and then we can do the second part of this video. In the second part of this video, I am going to show you how you can optimize your network interface or your internet, basically. So we do that by first going into the Start menu in here, and then you click on Device Manager, right? So in here, in the Device Manager, you want to select your network adapters, okay? Open it up, and then in here, you need to identify which is your Wi-Fi and which is your Ethernet 
adapter. Okay. To do that, there's two ways. You can right click on, you know, the internet icon at the bottom and then go to open network and internet settings. Or you can click on the start menu here and then click on network and internet. And then, you know, you can go to control panel or you can click on settings here and it will open up this window. Okay. But if you click on control panel, it will open up this one. And then you go to network and internet from here. You can go to um, network and sharing center. And then from here, you can do change adapter settings. Okay. Click on change adapter settings, which is already also in here. If you click on ethernet or Wi-Fi, you'll find this option right here as well. Change adapter options. Once you click this, it's going to show up this window, right? See, I'm going to click this change adapter settings. It shows up this window. In this window, I can see that my Ethernet is called Intel Ethernet Controller. And then my Wi-Fi is called Intel R Wi-Fi 6 AX 2.201, right? So I know the names. I go back to the device manager. This is my Ethernet. And this is my Wi-Fi. We start with the Ethernet Controller. Double click that. And then go into Advanced. Don't play with any other settings. Just go click Advanced. Not everybody's going to have these options, but the ones that you do, I'm going to give you some general rules to know which one to set it to. Okay. So anything that says power saving or link state, make sure that that is disabled. Okay. So for example, here, energy efficient, right? Or EEE, triple E. Okay. Triple E is also energy efficient Ethernet. This is off. Make sure that anything to have that has to do with power saving or suspend is disabled. See, also this is suspend. I made it disabled. Uh, and then anything that has wake, make sure you enable it or forced. Wait for link, just leave it to auto detect. And then we go from the top. If it has offload, you enable it. That's the general rule because we're going to follow that in the Wi-Fi as well. Anything with offload, you enable it. RX and TX, like for example here. Where is it? Uh, oh, here. RX means receive. TX means transmit. Make sure it's enabled for both. Okay. Here. Make sure it is enabled for both transmit and receive. So we go from the top. ARP offload. Like I said, anything with offload, you enable it. And then again, IPv4 checksum enabled RXTX, large send offload enabled, enabled. And then link state, like I said, anything with link state, you disable it. Okay. And then offload again, enabled. Other offloads also enabled, all of them, make sure they're all enabled. And then the next step is you find your transmits and your receives buffers, these buffers right here. Click on the transmit and receive buffers one at a time. <clears throat> and then using these arrow keys, you hold the top arrow until it's a maximum value. For me, this is the maximum value. For you, it may be 128. It may be 256. It depends. It may be 1024. It depends on your driver. It depends on your uh, network interface controller. If it's a real tick or if it's an Ethernet in, Intel R, uh, that depends on that. Okay. So for me, this is the maximum. And then we go for the receive buffers and then do the same. This is the maximum. Now, speed and duplex. Okay. This one, make sure it is set on auto negotiation. Or you can set it to the highest value here. So for me, it's 2.5 GB, okay? Because giga is higher than mega. A thousand mega makes one giga, okay? So this is effectively 2,500 megabytes per second or megabits per second. Uh, changing this to the lowest will control your speed. Like this is effectively you controlling your um, speed on your um, network card, okay? So make sure this is set to the maximum, all right? And make sure it is full duplex and not half. Half duplex means you can send or receive. You cannot send and receive at the same time. 
Okay, effectively cutting your speed into half. So you do not want to have half duplex. It is bad. Make sure it's on full duplex and whichever speed that you choose, it's on full duplex, right? So some of you might only have up to 100. Some of you may only have like 1.0. Some of you may even have like only 10. But, you know, just choose either the maximum or choose auto negotiation. Okay, I'm going to keep it on auto. And then, you know, like I said, selective anything suspend. Make sure it's disabled. The timeout is maximum. I don't want it to timeout. And then if you find this packet priority and VLAN, make sure it is enabled. Okay. Uh, if you have this number of queues, RSS queues, make sure it's maximum. And then if you have jumbo packet, make sure it is disabled. Make sure you disable the jumbo packet. And then we go here, flow control, disable the flow control. You do not want to limit your input, output, transmit, and receive on your network card. You want to have it disabled for maximum speed. Leave this on auto. Leave your you know gigabyte master slave mode on auto. And then if you have PME, make sure you enable it. Okay. So we went through all of these, all the offloads, make sure it is enabled. An offload is basically going to, instead of use your CPU to process information, to process your network information, it's going to use your network card, effectively reducing your CPU load, okay? Now, the last thing here is going to be the DMA coalescing and the interrupt moderation, okay? If you do have interrupt moderation, you make sure that this is enabled, okay? Now, once you enable interrupt moderation, this is another option that will take effect. Some of you may not have the interrupt moderation read. Some of you will do. For those of you that don't have it, don't worry about this. For those of you that do, after you enable the moderation, make sure you go into rate and then click on extreme, all right? Now. In DMA coalescing, if you have this, you go in here and then you select the lowest value in here, in this drop down list. M sec means milliseconds, U sec means microseconds. Okay, so 250 microseconds is the lowest value in this. Okay, a microsecond is one thousandth of a millisecond. Okay, so this is 0 0.250 of a millisecond, all right? So this is the lowest value, you select it, and assuming you did everything here else, energy efficient ethernet is off, okay? You click on okay. Once you click okay, it's going to restart your uh, network card, give it some time. Once it's done, we move on to the wireless. <laughs> Double click the wireless, go into advanced. Same thing we did before in there, anything with power, you see anything with power or uh, link or energy, memo power, save mode. I had just have it on auto, okay? And then in here you find transmit power highest. You want the maximum transmit power. Throughput booster, make sure you have it enabled. You can have a boost to your internet. Both of these weak are enabled. If you have UAPSD support, make sure you disable that. And then sleep, no sleep, no sleep at all, okay? I don't want anything to go to sleep. I don't want anything to save power by just disable my network. No, I don't want my internet disabled. So I disable that too. If you're on a laptop, you want to put your roaming aggressiveness if you're moving in between, uh, you know, uh, routers or access points, you might want to put this to medium or highest, depending, you know, on your signal. I'm on a desktop right now, so I'm keeping this on lowest. I do not want it to switch to any nearby access point. I want it to connect to the one that I told it to connect to, and that's it. Preferred band, make sure that this is having no preference, okay? So it can either use 2.4 or 5G. Packet coalescing, again, same thing as coalescing here. Make sure that this is enabled. Offload, again, see? 
make sure that this is enabled. Mixed mode protection should be enabled for both RTS and CTS, not only to self. And then GTK relaying, make sure it's enabled. Scan blocking is never, 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 you know, never block any network scans. Okay. Fat channel intolerance or anything with intolerance in it, make sure you disable that. Okay. You want your network card to be as tolerant as possible to your internet. If you're having bad connection, you don't want it to just drop, right? So you click any intolerance, you make sure you disable that. Channel width for the both, both are auto, okay? Offload again, enabled. And then your wireless mode, you make sure you select the maximum, which right here I have AX. AX is better than AC. AC is better than N. So you put in on AX. And then the wireless mode, a, B, G is dual band A, B, and G, right? So some of you might have only up to like, you know, A, B or B, G. And then some of you will have A, G, but make sure you choose A, B, and G. This is the maximum compatibility in your wireless mode, okay? Once we're done with all of this, we click OK. It's going to restart your, you know, wireless interface. And once I, you're done with this step, Okay, you are done with this step. Now you can restart your computer. And uh, after you're back, you can do a speed test, check your connection, and you should be good to go. And thanks you for watching.